Hey, welcome back to Random American. And if you're here for the Mystery Axe, go ahead and get yourself a cold snack, something to munch on, sit down on the couch or wherever, and stick around. You might be surprised what it is. Oakley Doakley, here we are. If you've made it to this point, you're probably halfway interested in what's going on in my hand over here. Um, uh, start off with, uh, I have slightly worked on this thing, just, just a tad, but I did it years ago whenever I first got this. Uh, I happened upon this and it's twin, not really twin, uh, it's pair, it, it's mate, at least it, it's gonna be. So, this will probably end up in a truck also because it is very, very similar to that Stanley. And the Stanley is kind of a hint towards what this is. So nobody guessed what it was. Had one guy guess. Appreciate you, buddy. Uh, just wasn't it, which he actually had a really good suggestion on what I should get. Man, I got an axe problem. Whatever. Um, we'll go ahead and get into this thing just to tickle. The only thing that I have done is I took the handle off like so. The handle is in excellent shape. The kerf is in good shape. It's actually cut down pretty deep. It had a bunch of washers, drove into here, and it was slightly loose. But other than that, it's phenomenal. I've actually never had an old axe in this good of shape all around as far as the handle is concerned. The handle has the original maker mark, maker's mark in it, so I know it is an original handle. Pretty good grain to it. It's a little bit of a 45, but I'm not upset with that at all. It's got tight grain, loose grain, tight grain, whatever. Uh, the grain is extremely straight. I mean straight as an arrow. The carpenter that put this one together knew what he was doing, or he got lucky. Either way, I'll take a win for a win. This is actually not beaten hardly at all. It's got the ever so slightest amount of rolling, but I'm pretty sure you could drop that on concrete twice and it would have a similar effect. So, the big reveal on what this here is. Put that on the handle for it. It's a craftsman. <laughs> um, I have never had a craftsman, and then I had two. I heard they made a million bajillion of them, but I actually had never seen one in person until I got, got them. So far, super impressed. This is probably one of my favorite boys axe handles. It is slightly uh, thicker down through here and a little bit thinner up here. I mean, they really knew what the hell they were doing on this one. The only thing we're going to have to do as far as reseating this thing is just seat it in a little bit further and knock a wedge in it. And I think this thing's going to be ready to go. I need to wire wheel it off a little bit. I'll show you a little bit of uh, rusting that was going on here at the top, here at the sides a little. I did run a stone to it, but that was all I did. I didn't file it. I didn't do nothing, it's just a stone, just to see where it was sitting as far as uh, how hard it was going to be to knock the knock the edge down. Uh, it may have been sharpened once or twice because it's a little bit flat here in the center and then the sides roll down, but that could be factory. I wasn't around when this thing was made, I guarantee it's older than me. I'll go ahead and Google it and tell you around about year that these things were made, and that'll be right here if I wasn't too lazy to do it. If I was too lazy to do it, it'll be here. Figure that one out. So we're gonna go ahead and get into this thing. I have my die grinder this time, and that wheel is extremely off balanced. Listen. So I actually have safety glasses for that one. Uh, and I did confirm that it was the uh, wire wheel, not the die grinder itself because it doesn't do it with this. So, let's get into cleaning this thing up just a smidge. And go out and enjoy this thing. I'll probably end this with a slight comparison between this and my Stanley, and eh, just to have fun. You've seen me do the same thing before, but you know what? I like doing this, so here we are. So I'm going to start out with some sunglasses indoors because as you do, I got some earplugs in so my voice sounds funny. Let's go ahead and figure out what do. I'll stand on this side because it spins the other way.
Alrighty. Well, we got her cleaned up a little bit. Uh, and that's all the more I really want to do. This is going to be a work axe, people. A work axe. Uh, next thing. Oh, I did take a little bit of the corner off. And that was pretty well rusted through. So, it's a good thing I very aggressively did all of that. Perfect. So, next thing's going to be... Um, God damn it. The next thing's going to be grinding. Because this thing's already in awesome shape. So let's go ahead and get the grinder up here and we're going to get her a get her a new edge. You know what? Next thing's not going to be grinding. I'm going to file it. You know why? I don't know. Probably because I have a little bit of time today and I don't have any wood glue, so burning time. Let's get to filing. Since I changed my mind, I'm going to go ahead and file this and I thought it was only right to reprofile this Craftsman Axe with a Craftsman file from I don't know how long ago but it's a very very good one and this is going to be the same basic concept as what I've done before I'm just going to go right along here Ooh, that's a little soft might need to support that a bit because the handle turned that a lot let's see what I got Ooh, maybe only one Oh, I might have to grind this. This is very, very hard steel. Oh, man. <laughs> Alrighty, well... I'd like you guys to appreciate how hard this steel is because this file is still very sharp like it's not it's not dull this is just very hard steel. I am going to have to grind it, after all. Because, just because it's a craftsman file, apparently doesn't make it uh, hard enough to cut chainsaw teeth. So, we're grinding. Okay, well it's a new day, new me. Uh, got this all cleaned up. I brought it back further than I did on that Stanley, but... I think it'll, <clears throat> I think it'll work pretty well for it. I'm just gonna clean up the pole a little bit. Not a whole lot to clean up. I'm gonna do pretty well the same thing I did on the Stanley, except I'm not gonna go quite as far. I'll just clean it from here, all the way around, because it's got these nice rolling corners. I'm gonna try and keep this as flat as possible, because I don't see a need to bevel it. I think it looks good. I mean, Craftsman did a good job on this for whoever made Craftsman's uh, axe heads, so. Yeah, we're just going to follow what they did, polish her around there, try not to cut myself again, and we're good. Now that we have the pole cleaned up a little bit, it's not perfect, but it's good enough to move on to the next step, which is going to be cleaning up the top of this, well, bottom and top, with some emery cloth, piece of random wood, nothing too crazy. But I'm going to go ahead and just get it, seat clamper to the table here, <clears throat> and we're going to clean it up. Not going to make it perfect. The rust pitting, that can stay a little bit. The hammer marks can stay a little bit. The flawlessness down here can stay a little bit because I'm going to ruin it. 
down here or back here we have some spots where this thing was used as a hammer or it was hit a little bit that's fine not going for perfection because this is a work axe and that's exactly what it's going to do ha! and it doesn't have to be emery cloth it can be just whatever sandpaper not a big deal good old random block of wood I'm not going to wet it or anything you're just going to go after it We'll do this for hours. And I'll, see, I'll do my best to blend it in back here where I was grinding. and I'll see you in 35 weeks. Turn on an audio book. Okie dokie. So I got the top and bottom cleaned up. Those are a little hazy. That's a little shinier. That's fine. Every one of my axes are different anyways. Got a little bit of a wedge made. This is also out of poplar, like the last one. And it fits in there pretty decent. Way down there. It should go pretty smoothly. I did get some Tight Bond 3. The green stuff, not the blue. The blue stuff works really well too, but it was like 50 cent difference, so I went ahead and got this. Same song and dance as the last one. I'm gonna set the head on there just as far as we can we're gonna glue this bad boy up really good and then we're gonna yeah, drive the wedge in you know the drill you've done this before That's uh, good enough for government work. Okay. I did shake this up. Not sure if it matters. <laughs> Ain't got a clue. I don't think I've ever had a wedge back out on me anyways. But we're, we're here. And I much prefer the gluing them in over uh I don't want to say here using a steel wedge to hold them keeper wedge maybe I don't know one of them ain't done it so long can't really remember oh we're gripping everywhere alrighty actually driving much better than I thought. That's probably tight enough, but I'm going to go ahead and take the anvil anyways. I'll be back. Okay, I could have stopped where I was and not broke my wedge, but that's fine. You can see I'm actually tight enough that I'm peeling the wedge with the uh, eye. And that is, so I'll just cut, I'll wipe it off, but I'll cut this off and grind her smooth a little bit. And that's set. That's, ooh, man, this is going to be nice. So there it is. Looks pretty as a picture. I'll bring you in a little closer here in just a minute, but it actually followed the, just like the other one, it followed the wedge pattern from before really well and I don't think that baby's going anywhere so now we just need to put a final sharpen on it I'm just gonna use a stone for that like I showed in previous video ain't nothing special I'm gonna do a micro bevel so I'll be kicked out just a tad because I have this very aggressive it's gonna cut very very well and then we're gonna take this we're gonna take that Stanley and we're gonna go chop some stuff and see which one does better yeah. So that'll be next.
Well, we are at the testing phase. Crooked Cherry. Uh, brought both of them out here. I'm going to do the face cut with the Craftsman. And I'm going to do the back cut with the Stanley. I'm going to fall it that way, I think. Uh, I don't know. After uh, I get it on the ground, we'll do some uh, bucking with it. With both of them. And just see which one throws chips better. See which one uh, cuts better. I don't need both, so I'm probably going to give one of them away. We'll see. Probably not to none of you guys. I'm going to give to a friend. But anyway, got excited. Sorry about that. But let's go ahead and get into cutting. See what happens. Going okay so far. That looks like a good enough face cut to me. I just use this for the whole cordwood challenge. A Stanley, much more efficient at cutting trees. Perfect. Perfect hinge cut down into it just a little bit much, but I had a step back here that ain't ain't too bad. Because people will get angry if I don't cut those off. But okay, let's get some branches off of it and do some bucking. Okay, so I have this in a log interesting news coming up in a second but before i go any further tell me which one you think is going to cut the best you got a little teaser of that right there you saw the stanley cut on a piece of hickory over at the house so let me know what you think before i get into it and then i'll get with my final thoughts on these and the interesting news just real basic i'm going to do a notch in the front with both of them just playing. There's the craftsman. That was this many chops. Okay, moved it over. God damn you. <laughs> Okay. All right. So, first we'll start with the bad. The handle on this, not as tight as it should be. 
it's actually working its way up. I don't know if it's not very uh, tapered on both ends and it doesn't want to grab as well. Because you saw how I put the wedge in. It was put in tight, tight. And I'll show you some B-roll here of how far this has moved up now. It's actually quite a ways. So I'll have to go and uh, drive it back in hard as I can. And I'll put that metal wedge in like I was talking about in the last one, which I forgot to do. And I might put a second one in it. I don't know. We'll see. The Craftsman has moved just a smidge. And I'll show some B-roll of that too. But not very much for as hard as I was swinging this. The edge, I might need to micro bevel it just a little bit more it has the tiny tiniest bit of roll in it and you'll get that a little bit from dirt on the bark but I don't know I, I, I can I can tune that out of it that ain't a big deal as far as which one I like better which one cuts better I feel the craftsman cuts a lot deeper and that just comes down to edge profile edge profile and uh, just the geometry of the head in general. It's a lot thinner. I can bevel it, or not bevel it, but uh, taper it back further a little bit easier. The Stanley, it's just shaped the way it is. I mean, I can, I can bring it back some, but how hard this tapers. This is more of a general purpose cutter, and that is more of a just cut deep and quick and that's that's what it does that is that is its job the handles as far as I know both of these are original I like the handle on the craftsman more also it's a bit uh, fatter and I'm I like more of a hammer handle kind of thing kind of like a, a Liam Hoffman axe they're a little bit more round than they are uh, skinny this one feels slightly sharp in my hand, but all of the technically correct ways to make a handle according to how old timers did it and they made money at it, this is the type of handle that you want because it flexes a bit more. I will risk tennis elbow with how little I swing an axe in comparison to them, so there's that. This one I will be giving to my buddy Dallas that... Uh, I did the sheath for because he does not have a boy's axe and it doesn't matter which of these you get this is the classic American boy's axe just to a T they're either two and a half or two and a quarter pounds they they're meant to just be carried with you everywhere you go and they work they absolutely absolutely work if you're at a yard sale or a flea market or something and you're stuck between these two because you've somehow managed to find new old stock Stanley or Craftsman and they're both in perfect condition get both of them I don't know, and that's probably what I'd do anyway because I think this cost me $20 this I have no idea, I can't even remember where I got it from so there's that but I probably could have picked this up for five or ten bucks if I really wanted to but yeah I really like them this one's gonna go just because I don't have to have two uh, and the more I look at this I think this is a plum made anyway that's gonna do it for this here episode I uh, hope to see you guys on the next one I have no idea what we're gonna be doing it's random for a reason so have a good one and I'll see you later